Um, here we go. Uh, Sandy Frank, roll big blue. Oh, I already rolled the other one. I rolled it. Anyway, it was two and four. 52 of 99. Well, I guess I should roll big blue. This was two and four. Two's on top, four's on bottom. If we roll a one or a three, I'll have to go change out. I'd hate not to roll it and now you get something bad and you're like, why didn't you roll big blue? That's two and that's four if we roll a two or a four. Ow. Three? <laughs> Damn near broke my wall. Uh, I gotta exchange one out. We got a three. Damn. And four. So we're keeping the bottom one. Three. That thing's loud as hell. And if I do have to combine this and refund that shipping. I will do that for you, bud. Here we go. That thing is loud, that die. Echoes into the night. breaks everybody got quiet if you are still here and you didn't hear um there is uh, we just put up random hit and draft hit for in case basketball guaranteed a hit in that one plus actually one spot would get um the base card as well which could be numbered all the way down. We'll just pair it with the lowest card. Which, whichever card's not that great. What's up, Philip Sko? How's it going, man? the autographs that's pretty much all that's in here there's no numbered cards you get these uh, television show inserts to serve man but the meat of this product is all about those autographs we hit the cut uh, we hit the cut autograph and I did the math it's one in 400 there's 458 cases and so 50 of the cases would have one Billy mummy it's a good life. It's a good life. That's what Drake says. Um, anyway, so that's roughly one in every what? Uh, there's 50 cases, 500. So that'd be one in every 50 cases? No, one in every five cases, right? If there's 500 cases, 458 cases, and 50 of them have an autograph. I have to get a calculator for the math on that one. But anyway, it's hard to hit it. Carol Byron. Basically, 20% of the cases have it. 80% don't. 
Carol Byron. Hey, got another dual autograph in this one. Dana Dillaway and Veronica Cartwright. Those two ladies got nice looking autographs. Uh, they do the opening monologue of the show, Captain Puckhead. They do the opening monologue on the front of the show, the guy that comes out and reads the opening monologue, and then they do the closing monologue on the back. So they need to take up all the space with all the opening monologue. Time enough at last. That episode, that's the opening monologue. That's the closing monologue. If, if you're a huge Twilight Zone fan, it would be fun to read them, I would guess. Um, other than that, they do look kind of plain. It's just words and a screenshot of the uh, show. Mm-hmm. All true. That one was backwards for some reason. It's just a standard insert, so maybe they're all backwards. Maybe I forgot to flip them. Oh, that's what happened. I forgot to flip them. Box 49.75. Regardless, <laughs> they still look horrible. I agree, uh, they're not that pleasant to look at because it's just like reading a book. They have all the pictures and color. Every episode of The Brady Bunch starts off like that. Something like that. This is a story all about how my life got twist turned upside down. I need to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool, and just shooting some b-ball outside of the school when a couple of guys that were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared. She said, you know, with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. I whistled for a cab, but when it came near, the license plate said fresh and had dice in the mirror. I thought, if anything, that this cab was rare, so I said, yo, Holmes, that's the Bel Air. I pulled up to the house about seven or eight and I yelled to the cabbie, yo, Holmes, smell you later. Look at my kingdom, I was finally there to sit on my throne as the Prince of Bel-Air. Nailed that whole song during the whole pack. Perfect timing. Here we go. Box do. Jim Halton. Oh, Bruno, it's just uh, four spots. Everybody gets a hit. I guess I should have clarified that, but everybody gets a hit. If you draft, if you're last, you get the you get the last hit and the base card. In the draft, you would get, if you're drafting and you're in it, whoever got last would get two cards because they would be a snake draft after the fourth hit is picked. The fifth, per, the fifth hit would go to the fourth person again in a snake draft. Now, if there were six cards in there, the third and the fourth spot would get two cards. Nah, I mean, the mirror. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. The message could have been slightly clearer, maybe. 
kind of stopwatch. Does anybody own a start watch? Mr. White, I don't think that Rolex makes a car radio. I don't think they make a radio. It's a clock radio. And Jillian. Alright. Yeah, you get a hit, Bruno. Everybody would get a hit, yeah. And Jillian, Jim Halton, Duel, Dana Dillaway, and Veronica Cartwright, Carol Byron, and you did get this one insert here. Okay. That's it for Daryl Sandy Frank. Thanks again, buddy.